My name is Alan Bulova. I come uh, from Czechia, uh, from the Budweis Hospital. I am a chief of the Department of Arithmology and Cardiac Pacing, so responsible for the whole program um, of Arithmology program in, uh, at our institution. The rationale behind the study is, was that we wanted to fill a gap because uh, we do not know what exactly uh, should be the post-procedural treatment of patients uh, undergoing concomitant um, uh, AF ablation after, cardi after cardiac surgery. Because, uh, you know, recent, uh, recent literature indicates that about a quarter of patients um, undergoing cardiac surgery suffer from atrial fibrillation. And of course, in absolute numbers, it's a huge, huge number. And even if you take into account patients with uh, mitral valve disease, it's even more than 50% of such patients. And nowadays, according to uh, STS uh, guidelines uh, endorsed in 2017, these patients should be ablated. So cardiac surgeons should perform cryomase procedure to improve the patient's, uh, patient's outcome, especially in my, uh, during mitral valve surgery, which is class uh, 1A indication. And uh, even with um, aortic valve surgery or simple coronary artery bypass grafting is a class 1B indication. But, of course, the main drawback is that we do not know in which percentage these patients relapse with atrial fibrillation, so they reappear with atrial fibrillation again. So we wanted to fill this obvious knowledge gap, uh, and that's why we initiated this investigator uh, initiated uh, or open label, open label, the randomized control trial. Uh, the patient population was uh, consisting of patients with non-paroxysmal type of atrial fibrillation, so either uh, persistent atrial fibrillation or long-standing persistent atrial fibrillation undergoing um, cardiac surgery procedures. So either coronary artery bypass grafting or, or end <laughs> uh, valve, valve repair. We excluded patients uh, with, uh, with uh, extremely dilated atria and we also excluded patients uh, who underwent previous RF ablation procedure for atrial fibrillation. So the key findings was that we were able, using hybrid approach, so deferred um, AF ablation, catheter ablation after cardiac surgery, after cryomase, we were able to reduce uh, the, the incidence of uh, atrial fibrillation, atrial, uh, atrial tachycardia, by 62%. So the relative reduction risk was 62% the absolute risk reduction was 30%, so from 70% recurrence rate down to 40% uh, recurrence rate, which is really huge and significant impact, taking into account that the monitoring of these patients was really intense. The old patients had uh, cardiac implantable monitors, so we knew about almost, I would say, almost every single, every single AF recurrence. This was our second question because it's not only about the AF reduction, so it must, to, to, to really propose this treatment, we should have proof, uh, we should have some clinical outcome proven as well. And our primary clinical endpoint was a reduction of the um, hospitalization for AF or ATAC, uh, hospitalization for heart failure, significant bleeding or cardioembolic events. And all this combined clinical endpoint was also significantly reduced by 54%. Yeah, I think this is the first randomized trial in this field, obviously, and probably it should be confirmed by other randomized trials uh, of that kind, which would then, you know, push a little bit more on the clinical impact. So, but basically the finding of our trial is that we should propose the patients undergoing concomitant um, uh, surgery for atrial fibrillation to undergo one uh, uh, another procedure for, for, uh, consisting of catheter ablation procedure uh, to improve uh, the clinical outcome and to improve or to reduce the burden of atrial arrhythmias.